of you here, whether you're on the recording or whether you're here live, uh, whichever, let me know how I can help you. You can send me a private chat. Just click that plus sign at the top of the chat there. And I am here for you. I also want to welcome all of our helpers that we have uh, about five or six helpers from Adobe here. They may be answering some of the questions that you put in the chat. So feel free to put your questions in the chat as we go along today. Now, we have some great events coming up. If you're not familiar, I know we have a lot of uh, first-timers here. Garima Gupta is one of our favorite presenters. Uh, uh, she has a wonderful uh, command of tools and tips and tricks and so forth. She has her own company, Arthur Learning. Uh, but she's going to be talking about tips and tricks for finding the right media for your work. I have this. Do I... Do I deploy it as a PDF or as a, as a uh, micro learning or uh, as a video or what. Uh, she's going to be talking to you about that and how to do that. And then J.D. Dillon is going to be here the same day. It's not a typo. And J.D. is going to be talking about where do I start in architecting a modern learning ecosystem? I know some of you told me that you are just starting out on that journey. Uh, so that might be very helpful to you. Uh, and then on February 20th, I've invited Chad Udell. He's the co-founder and CEO of SparkLearn. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, and the dog's saying, hurry up and get to the content. <laughs> uh, what execs need to know about generative AI in learning ecosystems? So if you're still trying to make a mess, I mean, not making a mess, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, learn and clarify about the, the mess and alphabet soup that is generative AI, you should come to that uh, because we're going to have Josh, I asked Josh Cavalier and Garima to both join Chad in a discussion about this. I think It'll be very helpful to you all. Now, we also have Alan Partridge and uh, Katie Heinen from Forrester uh, will be here. Many of you are familiar with Dr. Partridge, and uh, they're going to be talking about something we don't talk about enough, customer education. A lot of you have requested that uh, from me over the years, and uh, and we you know, try to get in there and, and this will be another uh, great step because uh, two people know more about that than Alan and Katie. So that's why they will be here. And uh, we uh, also want to, for any of you who have not yet registered for the Training 24 uh, Conference and Expo uh, in Orlando that's coming up, on February 26th to 28th. It's going to be a great uh, couple of days there in Disney. And if you don't know it, uh, yeah, it costs a few bucks to uh, to attend the conference. Uh, you'd want to get your company to pay for that. But if you're in the Orlando area or any place around there, if you're over in Tampa or wherever, you can attend the conference for 20, but not the conference, the expo for 20 bucks. You can come in and, and talk to uh, many of our presenters and, and our exhibitors there. And for the 20 bucks, I believe we'll get you in for two days in the expo. So come join us for that if you're not attending the entire conference. And we'd love to see you, okay? Now, we want to thank uh, the all-new Adobe Captivate uh, for sponsoring this session. And how many did I say, Sheriff? A hundred and what? A uh, hundred and... Uh, 24 other webinars uh, over the over the past few years. Uh, Adobe's been a great partner in that, and uh, you can get a free trial at the end of this session, or you can click right now and just go back to it at the end of the session. Uh, and so, thank you, Adobe, for being making it possible for all of our members to attend these webinars for free. So, uh, being a wonderful partner. Let's go ahead and get started now with micro learning and Adobe Captivate bite sized women w wisdom for modern learners. Sheriff, welcome back to Training Mag Network. Thank you, Gary. Thank you for the lovely introduction. And uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here. And welcome to this training on micro learning. I noticed um, as bad Gary was chatting with all of you, there are a lot of folks who are new. So welcome. And uh, feel free to put your questions in the chat window. Uh, my, the Adobe team is there to answer that. Uh, and let's just begin. So this is one, this webinar is focused on the learning trend, micro learning trend, which a lot of you must have heard of. So before we begin, what does the term modern learner bring to your mind? It'll be great in the chat window if you can just uh, type in one word that comes to your mind when you see the slide. Quick, mobile, rushed, connected, no time, yes. Great, on the go, on demand, absolutely. 
short attention span. Yes, interactive. Great. And absolutely, you're absolutely right. Because uh, when we look at when we look at the learning landscape, how it's evolving, uh, the new breed of learners, um, you know, they are digital natives. The whole world has shifted in that way. Um, they're self-directed. They don't like to be, you know, told. They like to just control their learning themselves. Absolutely short attention spans. Mobile first approach prefer social learning to the traditional learning methods, prefer continuous learning. And they're global and diverse, right? So right now, uh, you know, even on this webinar, I know a lot of folks are based out of the US, but we've had folks from Europe and uh, India attend as well. So, um, and the work-life integration, that's, that's proving to be key, you know, as a lot of folks are using a hybrid model of working, uh, you know, uh, managing, to fit in your training between your other tasks, uh, that, that's that's proving to be a new way of learning. So uh, it's very hard to imagine this modern learner in this traditional learning setup. So, uh, you know, now uh, even to think of sitting through a week-long training or two-day-long training uh, where the learning is passive and where there's an information overload. So all, all this is just is seeming very dated now. And the world is moving towards micro learning. And when we say micro learning, the key and words which again come to my mind are, you know, short, focused, digital, flexible, and accessible. And what it does not is this, right? Sometimes the mistake a lot of folks make is, uh, you know, trying to just focus on the timing of the training, right? So when we are talking about uh, a five-minute training and trying to stuff everything into it, that, that, that's not what it's all about, right? So, and the concept of micro-learning actually is not new, right? Because, you know, uh, forever a well-designed course is always broken up and then the least granular form, we have these topics, Right. So whether it's a classroom training or a virtual training, whenever you're designing a course, this is how you would break up the content and the topics, the lowest, the most granular uh, 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 nugget of uh, information. It is usually based only on it is supposed to be based only on one objective. And what do I mean by objective? It's the task. What will the learner be able to do after taking that topic, after learning or going through the content in that topic? So the content has always been structured like that. So this is nothing new. So what we are talking about from a micro learning perspective is taking each of these topics because they are bite sized. Uh, the fact that it's only focused on one objective or one task itself makes the content more manageable. And this, you know, ensuring that it's in a digital format, ensuring that it has interactivity in it, ensuring that it's accessible across different devices. This is what makes it uh, more uh, accessible and uh, usable in this modern um, learning landscape. So when you're talking about applications, how can we apply and where can we use micro learning? So you can use it as standalone courses. You can have bite-sized courses. You can have all these broken up into tiny courses, but make sure that they're all structured and grouped together well, because sometimes the learner goes through multiple micro learnings to meet the higher level learning objective, right? And then if you want to just use it as independent individual uh, learnings, you can use it as supplemental learning, you can use it as job aids, as just-in-time training, pre, post, skill development. So a lot of applications for micro learnings. And let me share some examples with you, right? Duolingo. This is using a game-based micro-learning approach. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but if you log into the Duolingo site, you will see uh, games. And it's a great way for, you can specify if you're a beginner level, what's the amount of time you're willing to invest. And then you get these, uh, these cards where you can just select and it'll, it'll uh, give you feedback. It'll tell you whether you're right or wrong. The second example I'd like to show you is uh, the Google Whisper courses. 
Now, over here, Google's using micro learning as a supplemental learning. So after their training, their leadership training, so they have been sending a series of emails with a call to action. So if you see in this, it, uh, if you look up um, the Google Whisper courses, samples of it are there online. Few folks have blogged about about it. So you can go and take a look at it. it. It calls for specific things. So over here in this particular example, it's about acknowledging and appreciating. And they're specifically telling managers, you know, call out your team member, appreciate something about them. So it's just these tiny little uh, reminders that can be sent after a training, which helps learners apply their learning to their day-to-day -day jobs. And the third example I'd like to share is Khan Academy. So this is a blended learning approach. So it's got a combination of both the uh, long uh, form of training and micro learning. So don't, don't be misled into thinking that micro learning has to be like small nuggets and all that. The important thing is having the information that meets the objective of the training together, right? You can't just slice and dice content just to make it fit into the five minute or three minute uh, uh, limit that you set for yourself. Sometimes it has to be longer than that. I mean, try your best to make it concise to ensure that you meet the short attention span of your learners, but don't just break it up and just distort the content so that you know, it's not useful to anybody. So you can see that the Khan Academy has had a good blend of you know, long form as well as micro learning. So I just wanted to share these examples with you just to understand that you can use micro learning in any which way you want. And when we're looking at poor micro learning design, I mentioned you know overloaded content, the number one mistake you do when you're uh, creating a micro learning. Don't overstuff it. Don't overload it with content. And even if it meets the you know limit that you've set for yours, even if it's a short, snackable piece of content, but if it does not meet the learning objective, then it's very shallow. Again, that's not good learning design. That's not good micro learning design. And lack of interactivity. Please note it's digital, it's online, there's no instructor, so the content has to be engaging. Um, so any interactivity you can add, any feedback that you, you that you can provide will improve the design of your micro learning. And you know, again, it has to be accessible across devices, right? It has to be mobile friendly, it has to be um, responsive across devices. And also because micro learning are tiny nuggets of courses or tiny nuggets of information, sometimes it gets hard to administer it and monitor it and manage it. So again, having a system, a platform where all this content can be grouped together, can be monitored easily, can be tracked easily is very important. So these are some pointers I'd like to share that, you know, it'll be uh, that you should keep in mind when you're designing your micro learning courses. And uh, so let's go through one life cycle. So I'll just put this here uh, while I was talking to Gary earlier, Gary was like, hey, Sharad, it'll be really nice if you could take us through the entire life cycle. And that's what I've done. So in the handout section, there is a design document, which I'll be referring to. And let's go through this entire life cycle so that you can see end to end what to do and what not to do. Right. So I'm going to start with the needs analysis. And over here, I've taken the topic of competitive positioning. So this is a sales topic. Um, and I, I took a complex topic on purpose just to show you how you can break that up and how you can build micro learnings which are easy to digest and you know easy on the learner. So over here I've taken the title of competitive positioning and the audience I've identified the audience sales and marketing professionals and the objective now again when I come back to it objective it's, it's it's a difficult task you know it's not as easy as, as it looks so the key thing to keep in mind every time you're defining objectives for a course is asking yourself, what will the learner be able to do? It should not be understand or describe and all those things. It should be actual doable tasks. Otherwise, you know, what, what can they apply to their uh, to their day-to-day -day, uh, jobs. So that's where, if you notice, most of the objectives over here are action-based, right? Identify, they can perform something, they can benchmark something, they can craft something, they can build something, they can measure something. So these are task-based objectives. Again, this is at a very high level. I have just identified these objectives to define the scope. Now, this seems very 
complex and seems very big. You're absolutely right. So now I'm just going to drill it down and get it a little more organized. So as per the objectives that I've set, I have defined a very high level course outline. So these are going to be my high level modules. And then I'm going to break this down even further. So I've taken module one, and which is a simple thing, right? So if you go back here, this is just the first uh, bullet point in my list. So getting familiar with the competitive landscape. And you can see, um, so this is a novel. I'm sure a lot of you, because I noticed in the chat, everyone introducing themselves as learning specialists or instructional designers. And this is a challenge we always face, right? There's so much content. How do we sort it? Because we have to keep the scope crisp. We have to keep the content concise. So over here, again, break it up. So what I've done over here is I've broken it up into three lessons, competitive analysis, conducting market research, and competitor profiling. So I thought those were introductory topics, and I just listed those down. But there is scope for improvement here, if you notice, within lesson one. Topic one. Now, that doesn't seem to be a full-blown topic because it's just an introduction, right? What can I assess the learner on? What can I test the learner on? It's just an introduction. So maybe this doesn't constitute as a separate topic by itself. So I may merge topic one and two together because both of them are an introduction to competitive analysis. It's introducing how, what... Uh, the role of competitive analysis is in strategic decision making. So you can see over here, these two topics, they have been detailed out too much. I've broken it up into two, two smaller topic. So I'm planning to merge that. And another mistake over here, if you see under lesson three, topic three is there's too much content in there. So you can see over here, though I'm saying analyze the competitor strengths, I'm talking about two very deep uh, methods over here, the SWOT analysis method and portal five forces. So that's a lot of content for one topic. So that may need to be broken up. So I'm just highlighting, you know, this is important before you get into the details, before you get into the weeds, it's important for you to you know, sit at that 20,000 feet level and design and structure the course without getting into the weeds of, okay, what interaction am I going to use? What is the graphic I'm going to select, etc. So I think in the design outline phase, it's important to think through and evaluate each topic and identify the learning objective for each topic. So now once that is done, then you decide, okay, what is the best format and delivery method? So as I explained to you in micro learnings, I mean, it doesn't have to be very high tech, right? Even an email will suffice. Google Whisper courses are just emails being sent out. So you can use any design, use the most appropriate one, select the one which is, you know, most um, engaging and something your learners will easily be able to learn from. So here you can see there's a wide variety of formats that you can use. You can create e-learning courses, you can create videos, fact sheets, infographics, games, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then once you have selected this format, you can then start scripting your content and the storyboard. You can storyboard the images, identify images and other assets, maybe record the audio, write the audio script and so on and so forth. And once the development is over, the scripting and the storyboarding is over, that's when you go and develop your courses. And you can use an authoring tool or if you're using an email format, it's just typing an email and so on and so forth. And once the course is ready, then you go and deploy it, and then you will monitor and report on it and collect feedback so that you'll know if the courses are meeting what your in, uh, intended objective was, and if not, you can bring it back in. So this is the entire life cycle. I'm going to go back a bit because we are going to now look at the storyboard that I created uh, for our demo today. So if you go to the handout section if, and pull out the design document, um, we will be able to get started. So I'm going to open the design document on my screen. So Gary, uh, can I request you to switch so that I can share my desktop? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Can you see my screen? Uh, we can now. 
We are oh, not seeing the presentation though. We are seeing a W. There we go. Yeah. So I have my design document ready and I'm going to also launch Captivate. This is my authoring tool. I'm the evangelist for Adobe Captivate. This is the new e-learning authoring tool from Adobe. Uh, folks uh, who have used Classic will know that uh, Adobe's e-learning authoring tool has been around for more than two decades. And over the years, it started off as a simulation recording tool. But over the years, it has so many features, so many powerful features. And last year, we built a new product from scratch because we felt that um, for the new technological advances which are happening in the industry, we needed a new technology stack. And so we have started and we built this beautiful new product. And I'm going to show you how you can use it to create your micro learnings. So this is the interface I have opened. I'm opening a new project. And you can see this is similar to other Adobe products, which you may have seen. It's using the same design interface, Adobe Spectrum. So now let me toggle between my design document and this authoring tool interface, right? So I'm going to go into my script. So let's go and select the first lesson, which is competitive analysis. So I'm going to go and in my slide over here, I'm going to add a text box. Right, so I'm going to add this text box, and you can see on the right, this is where the configuration settings are. And you can see that in this particular text box, which I added, has some additional components. So I can select and add a title. I can add a subtitle if I want. I don't want it because I want to, in fact, I just want to keep the title. Right. And over here, I want to give it some kind of a background. So I'm just going to go and the background over here, I'm going to choose an image. I'm going to my system and I'm going to add a logo so that I can have it branded. So I have this. I'm going to now select my topic, which is introduction to competitive analysis. So now this, you can go and apply any configuration setting. So in Adobe Captivate, uh, the left panel is where you find all the slide templates. So I'll do a quick walkthrough of the interface for folks who are new to this tool. So you can see I have some pre-built slide, slide templates over here, some question slide templates, and a whole lot of assets, which I can also borrow from. Uh, those are pre-built uh, slides. Then I have different blocks of information. Like I have text blocks, I have media blocks. So this are image, I can create an image grid. So I'll use a bunch of these to show you how this gets created. And then if I want some interactive components, if I want the learner to type something, I want them to use a button, a radio group, I can do that. And then we have some pre-built interactions called widgets. Uh, and this is the widget gallery. So we have about eight widgets you can choose from. So this would be the flip card. So we will be creating in my demo, we will be using some of these widgets to create a micro learning. So over here, now let me just go and uh, paste this. And now I would like to add one image. So I'm going to choose an image block, right? So I don't want the text beneath it. So again, I'm going to the right and I'm going to remove the caption and the subtitle. I'm going to replace this image. I'm going to select something from the asset library. So this is a library of assets that Adobe Captivate provides you. You don't need a subscription to any stock library. So there are a lot of assets over here. So there are images, videos, audio files, video files. So you can choose from any of these. So you can choose these and you can use it. If the image is not fitting well, you can go and edit it. So over here, I'm just going to move it a bit. And this, there you go, I have my image. So I have my title, I have an image. And now let me go back to my design document and choose the content. So I'm going to choose this introductory content, which I have. 
So I'm going to add another text block over here and I'm going to put this. So you can see over here that I have added an image block. I have added two text blocks. And now let's go and see what else can I do here. So oh, if you can see, there's a difference in the color because over here, this is transparent. So I'm going to the background. I'm selecting solid fill and I'm going to choose the color to match the rest of the slide. Right, so we have this. Now, the modern learner, right? This course we are creating is going to be digital. It should be mobile friendly. It should use a mobile first approach. And usually these courses, the preferred format for mobile courses is the long scroll format. So I'm going to build this micro learning using the long scroll format. Now, what does that mean? It means that all the content is on one slide. So you're just scrolling through the content, right? So over here, we have created the first topic. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to merge these two topics because there's not enough information here to test a learner on this. So I'm going to continue building out the course. And now I'm going to uh, add another component over here. So I'm going to go and choose a widget. So I'm going to add a widget from the thing. And you can see that it has just expanded the slide and it has added the content at the bottom of the slide. So now let's go and choose this topic, the title over here, and I'm going to add it. So, and then again, uh, if there is some explanation text, I'm going to take that and I'm going to add that in here. And now I'm going to configure each of these cards. So you can see there is there are two tabs here, there's front and there's back. So the front, I don't want any of this text on the front. So I'm just going to go again on the right-hand side. So all I need to do is select these blocks of whatever content. So if you can, if you select the block, it gives you all the configuration settings for that block. But then if you go and select individual components in it, you'll notice that the settings have changed because these are very specific to that particular container. So let me go back one level up and then I'm going to turn off the components for the, so these are the components for the widget. So if I turn off the title, it's going to remove the title up here, uh, but that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to remove the text from each of the cards. So you can see the front is displayed. I want the image. I don't want the title and the subtitle. I want to use the back for the content. So over here, I'll remove the image and just use the title and the body for my content. So going back to the front, I'm going to now replace these images. So it's as simple as selecting and going into, uh, so let me just choose from uh, some of these images. So, um, so no, no programming required, no uh, complex steps to create these kind of courses or these interactions anymore. As you can see, it's, these are pre-built templates. All you need to do is go and select it, and then you can change the uh, image and the text. You can replace the image and text. And if the image is not sitting well, you can go and adjust it by double clicking on it and just moving it around so that you can then focus on the area you want displayed on your widget. So you can see I have already changed the content from the front. Now I'm going to click the back and then I'm going to copy paste the content, which is over here, into it. Right, so and over here, this is a little. So for subheading two, I just changed the font size. And if I click this update preset, it's going to save the changes I've made to all the other subtitles so that I don't need to keep going and resetting the font styles for each time I do it. So I'm just showing you some tips and tricks here as I'm updating this. And uh, now I'm going to build this completely so you can see how easy it is to uh, create a micro learning from scratch and uh, using these predefined templates and widgets. So ideally, it's 
just how quickly I'm able to copy and paste uh, the content uh, into my template, right? So you can see, I mean, there's scope for condensing and making this text more concise. So I'm not going to do that right now. And you can see that this is now complete. My interaction, my flip card interaction is now complete. So this is all ready. And then there's just one more section I would like to add, which is the summary at the end of the topic. So I'm just going to go and add one more text block over here. So let's add a title. So the title. So we have a full blown course over here. With the introduction. And then we have fixing this content so that, so you can see we have the micro learning, it's ready. And one thing I wanna show you now is you can just go and preview this. You can see these three icons on top over here. One is the desktop, one is the tablet, and one is the mobile portrait view. So I'm going to look at this and see how it looks like on a tablet. And you can see it has automatically resized the content to fit into the tablet uh, size. And if I select the mobile portrait view, you can see it is automatically uh, you know, re readjusted. And this is exactly what it will look on the mobile device. And you can even have the mobile landscape view uh, or the portrait view. So by just clicking on it, you can see that. So you can see how easy you didn't have, I didn't have to do anything to make this responsive. So the content is automatically resized. Uh, Adobe Captivate automatically makes the course auto-responsive. So now I'm going to save this. I'm going to call it module one. And I'll just say introduction to analysis, right? And I'm going to save this file. So now let's look at, you know, I, I showed you how to preview it up here. Let me also show you how to preview it on your browser. Or if you want to preview it on a live device, I will show you that as well. So you, I can see over here, again, I can view it on the desktop view, the tablet view, or the mobile view. And I'm starting the course, and you can see it is displaying it. And if I click on this card here, you can see it is showing me the back of the card. And, you know, I have to just scroll to the right, and it is showing me. And you would have noticed that this arrow at the bottom, that is not relevant here in this long scroll format, but there was forced navigation. Unless I clicked on all the four cards, this did not get enabled. So, so you can enable forced navigation with just a click of a button. And I'll show you how you do that. So you can see for this particular thing, um, actually, because this is not relevant in this format, this is not, we don't have multiple slides here, so this navigation is not necessary. So you can go and disable the previous and the next buttons if you don't want it. In this case, I just want to show you how to enable forced navigation. So you have to just select the widget and you go down and under settings, you will notice that there is just a toggle button here. So if you want to enforce forced navigation for your widgets, where you want to make sure the learner clicks on each of these images to see the content before they can proceed to the next slide, you can just turn this on, right? So, and, uh, so let us disable this. And now I will show you how to publish the course. So we have created the micro learning. We have saved it. We have previewed it. Now let me show you how you, if you want to preview it on a live device, you can select this device preview. It has a QR code, and then you can actually use this, scan this, and preview it on a live device. And now let me go to the publishing part. So if you go and select publish here, it will publish it in an HTML5 format. If you want to publish it as a SCOM file, you have to first go and make some changes to the preferences. You select preferences, go to quizzing, 
and within that go to reporting. If you enable reporting, it will now make it a SCOM file. So I'm going to click OK now and I'm going to publish it. So we have this file in addition to be, being an HTML, there'll also be a zip file which is going to be published. So this project has been published successfully. So let's go and view the folder where it's in. Um, it's under documents. Uh, so I'm just going to do it again so just so that I find it easily. Uh, I'm going to put it on my desktop. Okay, cool. So I have it on my desktop. Great to publish it. So that's how you publish your course, right? So let's go and see what it looks like on my desktop. I have the course, a zip file, which is ready to be uploaded to my learning management system. So going back to my PowerPoint deck, we have completed this step here, right? Creating an autoresponsive course. And then we come to the learning management system. So I'm just going to show you quickly how, how it would appear in the learning management system, just to take you through the entire life cycle. And after that, let's go and create another micro learning using some other format. I'd love to show you different ways and tips and tricks in which you can create uh, micro learnings in different formats. So going back to this, I have open the learning management system. So this is the platform where I can upload my uh, course. And then, so this is another product, as Gary mentioned, sometimes, I mean, because it's closely interlinked and Adobe has the entire suite of digital learning solutions. And so that's where I want to, because I wanted to show you the end-to-end -end story over here. I have now logged into Adobe Learning Manager, which is our learning management system. I am logged in as an author. Uh, as an administrator. So in order to create my courses, I will need to log in as an author. So I'll click create content. I'm going to click add content. I'm going to give it a name. This is my module one and it is introduction. I'm not going to add the description here in the interest of time. Uh, and now over here, let me go and pick it up from here. So this is the zip file which we published. I'm going to add it over here and let it upload. So this is going to be uploaded to the content library on the learning management system, after which I can add some tags to make the course more searchable. So over here, maybe I can call it sales training competition analysis. You can create your own tags over here. And then I'm going to click save, which then adds the content to the content library. So this is step one. And then I go and add it to a course. So um, you can see that it's still spinning. So the content is being finished. It's now ready. So I have M1 introduction. This is my content. I go to courses, right? So I've already created some shells, empty shells over here. So I'm going to open it. So I'll walk you through all the settings over here. So you need to now give a course name, another description. And within this, I can now add modules. So if you wanted multiple topics, you can add multiple modules here. So I am now going to go and edit this and uh, I'm going to add this content. So I'm going to uh, this module, which is a self-paced module, and you can see it is listed over here. I'm going to add. So this has been added. Let me delete this module. So we have one, one topic inside this course, and I'm going to publish this, republish this. So I'm going to click proceed and this content is now ready and it is the introduction and I'm going to now view it as a learner. Let me just go and enroll myself. I need to be an administrator for that. I go to the courses 
And I'm going to enroll learners. I'm going to add myself. And now if I go and log in as a learner now, the course should be assigned to me and a notification should have been sent. So I have the course assigned to me. I'm going to click it. It's launching the course in the LMS player. So we'll give it a couple of minutes to load. The first time it loads, it takes a couple of minutes. And then you can click the play button over here and you can see that the course is now ready to be viewed. So I'm seeing the course which we just created. We have launched it. So you can see the long scroll format over here, the summary at the end of it. And we have now gone through the entire life cycle of development and deployment. Now let us go back. I'm going to now close my player. And now when I go to go in as an administrator, I will show you where I can go and view the dashboards for my course. So over here, I go to reports, and then I can choose a custom report. And um, these are some sample reports which are there. So you can see that these reports help you manage as per the skills, how many people have gained skills and all that. And then I'm just going to go back and I'm also going to show you some other settings that as a learner, which can be used such as the leaderboard. So, uh, so the LMS, in addition to the authoring tools capabilities, offers you some additional um, me mechanisms to engage your learners. So, you know, when you're creating all these various micro learnings and putting it out there, uh, it's it's important to also motivate your learners to take these courses. So, you know, by having a leaderboard and, you know, based on the number of uh, uh, topics they consume, they are given points, they're awarded points, they're awarded badges, and then they can compare their, their points uh, with the points of their peers. So, so all this is going to help you implement a culture of learning. Uh, and encourage and motivate your learners to take your courses. So it's not, it's not one thing, right? So there are a lot of things which constitute to making your courses successful. So this was one a micro learning. Now let's let me just see how much time we have left. I think uh, let me take up another ten minutes. I think we can uh, create some more courses. Uh, uh, and I would love to show you how. So we saw the long scroll format. Now let's go and create one in the traditional format. So let me just um, uh, show you this. And uh, some of the other uh, uh, tools that I'd like to introduce you to, uh, just so that you know you have more tools at your disposal to create these uh, amazing images and um, you know animations and so on and so forth. So one is. Uh, you know, we have uh, Firefly. So, uh, and then we have uh, Adobe Express. So let me open Adobe Express. So from here, so that you can see what it looks like. So there was a new, uh, functionality over here, which I thought was very interesting, uh, which was, um, you know, uh, how to create. Um, so you can see over here, you can create images, you can create, you can use NII, you can create uh, a lot of different types of uh, content. So this is one way of uh, doing this. And let me also show you Adobe Firefly, which is the new tool we have to generate images. So, so this has a lot more functionality over here. So you can just, you know, type in. So if you want um, landscape or let's generate a 
image over here. I think the things against Oh, okay, let's call it, get an illustration. So you can see over here on the right, there are different types of techniques and effects you can apply to it. So if you want a layered paper effect, you can just select that and add to it. Uh, if you want to change, um, so this was before I applied the layered paper effect. So let's now uh, regenerate it because I've added this additional technique. Uh, you can change the color, lightning, tone, etc. So this way you can create your own images so you can see how beautiful this is. So I'm going to download this and use it somewhere. <laughs> so, so this is one way of creating your uh, uh, images. So I just wanted to do a lot of talk of AI, etc. And I just wanted to show you all the AI offerings that Adobe is coming out with. I also want to let you know that Captivate will be having a lot of AI capability, uh, which will be coming out this year. So within Captivate, uh, you can create a course, complete course, just by specifying the title. You can create an entire course by just uploading a PDF document with text in it, and the AI engine will interpret that and build out a course, multiple slides, uh, and it will have images and you know widgets automatically applied. You can automatically generate assessments and so on and so forth. So, uh, so hey, keep Sharon? tuned in. Uh, yes, I would like to in. see a demo of that. Uh, so can we build that into our next session, please? Absolutely. So in uh, in Orlando, I will be demoing all the upcoming Gen AI. So there's going to be a sneak peek. So uh, if you're attending the uh, training to, uh, 2024 uh, conference in Orlando, I will be there in person demoing all this. So Gary, uh, definitely after that, I'm happy to do a demo on one of the webinars as well. That'll be perfect for me. Never mind the webinars. I, I'll, I'll be able to see it. Unless anybody else wants to. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Sure. <laughs> so let me just quickly walk you through some of these other things. So let me show you. Uh, since we have very little time, let me first show you this drag and drop interaction. So, you know, let's build that out. And we can go over by mm, five or six minutes or so if you need to. Oh, okay. So let, let me just do that then. So let me... This one. No, I put a lot into this, Gary, thinking if there's time, I'd love to, you know, show folks uh, how to do this. So sure. you can see over here. Um, yeah. So I'm going to just, so here I'm building out like a traditional uh, slide based format. So start, you can apply these designs. By just clicking a button on the right, so my first slide is ready, and uh, then let me go and uh, add some content. So uh, again, over here, let me choose something with an image and a slide. And if you don't want, uh, you can remove some of the content. So let me using the same content. Let me add a video instead. I can show you another format, right? So here we have a video format, right? And again, you can upload from your uh, repository or we have an asset library, so you can have a video. And uh, over here, again, we may want to add some buttons, Right, so I've added a button. I want two buttons so that navigation becomes easy and I want to align the buttons distributed left and right. So, and over here, I want to use the previous design and I want to use this. So now I have navigation also built into my slide. My second slide is ready. And now I'm going to create an assessment. So let me go and choose the multiple choice assessment. So you can see it has added this. I have five different answer options. So I'm going to increase this to five. 
and uh, there are multiple answers. So I'm going to select this checkbox over here. And uh, now I need to configure the answer. So I just select this button here. And um, so the second and the third option are the correct answers. Let me go and now copy paste this. Oh. I'm going to try to do this as fast as I can. So folks who would like to try this, we have a trial version of the authoring tool available. So you can go and download it and try out uh, because I've shared the design doc that I'm using, you can go in. So you can see I have added the question. Oh, the questions, <laughs> the question stem is missing. I'm going to add the question stem. So you can see I have configured this. If I want to apply, if, the, if it's too plain and boring, you can just go and uh, make some changes over here. You can just select from these options that are there. Right. So um, if you want, you can even go and change the appearance by changing the background image. So you can just go and select from your system if, you, if there is any image that you would like to use. You just choose from one of these. Right. So and this is not showing this. So I'm going to use a card. So you can do a lot of things to, uh, you know, be creative and make, improve the look and feel of the course. So, so here you can see we have an assessment, we have a, a video, and we have a introduction slide. And the same way you can add this, and you have the quiz results which are displayed. Let's go and preview this. Introduction. Let me move this to the side so that it doesn't get in the way. Oh, I didn't configure the start button. So let me go and configure the start button. So I click on this and let me introduce you to these options on the right. So this, the first one is the visual properties. So you saw the font properties, the image properties, they're all listed here. The second one is interactions. So since I want to configure an action to this button, I have to just select the interaction and you can see there's a trigger. So for buttons, it's always the click and the tap trigger. And then you have to choose the action. So now, since I want to go to the next slide, I can either choose this action or I can just go and specify uh, which slide I wanted to navigate to. So you can use a branching um, form of navigation if you want. But now, because I want to go to the next slide, I'm going to choose the next slide. And that's it. That's all I need to create an interaction. So, uh, so you can create custom interactions by using the interactions uh, option. So this has taken me to the next slide. Same way, I haven't configured these buttons. So let me get back here and configure, uh, go to next slide. Right, and it takes me here. Let me select these two. I'm selecting some incorrect options here. And you can see there is a incorrect feedback which has come and I you know, have failed. So over here it gives me this. So you can set the number of attempts if you want. So let me select the slide. I go back to the visual properties. And over here, you can see the number of attempts are single. You can make it unlimited if you want. If you want to shuffle the answers, you can select this option. So a lot of settings over here for you to go and configure your quiz settings. And so we saw this icon, which is the interactions. Then we have animation. So if you want to apply animations to your images or text, you can go and select from the different types of animations for entrance, emphasis, and exit. You want to add audio, you can do that. You can add captions and generate text to speech. So if I type a, a caption here, welcome to this micro learning. You can then go and generate audio by clicking this. You can select from the voices here. There are a bunch of voices in uh, American English, British English, Korean, French, Canadian French, and Spanish also, Mexican Spanish. 
Korean. So you can choose from any of these accents and then generate your audio. And you can see this is how you can generate from text to speech. And um, the audio file also, you can then go and edit the audio file. So when you see over here, you can see the slide audio, which has now been added. And then you have some basic audio editing functions over here. And this last uh, icon over here is the accessibility icon, where you can go and define accessibility text for the various components. So at the slide level, you can define it or at the uh, uh, all the components within the slide. So for uh, even the question slides, you can see you can define the accessibility text. As you hover over a particular component, it highlights that component on your slide. And if you don't want it to be visible, you can hide it from the screen reader and so on and so forth. So, so this is how you can create your micro learnings, which are engaging. So there are a huge amount of templates, um, not only in the slide, in the templates, uh, if you click any of these icons on the left, not only does it gives you pre-built slide templates, it also gives you components which you can play around with, or you could even go to the assets. And here there are some, uh, pre-built courses. So if you click on any one of them, there are a huge variety of pre-built templates, which you can just add to your course. So if you want to insert the slide, you can do that. And then you can um, just edit the text and the images. So you can see over here, um, this the default color is uh, missing. So you can make some changes. So you, you can browse through that and select anything. So you can see, uh, we made it very easy to build courses quickly, which are responsive, which are beautiful, which are accessible, and which, you know, other uh, uh, tools which will help you make it more interactive and, and nice to look at. And this brings me to the end of my presentation. And uh, let me see how I can get back. <laughs> Where are you trying to go, Sheriff? Not there. <laughs> you want to go here? Is that where you want to go? Hey, I'm trying to, I have to minimize my uh, screen. So I'm trying to get uh -oh. out and uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll find it. To, to my ending here, we'll, we'll put mine up here. And <laughs> if, it, if it will move for me, it doesn't seem to want to, there we go. Yeah. Okay. okay. Here we go. Okay. So, and now I hand it back to you, Gary. Okay, great. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, let's see. So uh, anybody who is looking for a certificate for attending this session, you are certainly welcome to find one. I'll get you the link here in, in just a moment. Uh, also, so Sherith, uh, a lot of people noticed that the, um, that the uh, handout, the design doc, was saved in portrait rather than landscape. So if you could please send me a copy of it in landscape, then the right okay. side won't get cut off and we will post it with the recording uh, just a little bit later today. Okay. okay. And oh, hi, there's your camera. Nice to see you. <laughs> and then um, <laughs> Shuba, thanks for your help uh, during the session. Shuba, uh, you mentioned to somebody that you were going to get the uh, information on accessibility. And if you send that to uh, Keith, my assistant, then he will post it along with the updated um, design doc and other handouts and the recording. So we'll have all that for you as soon as people send me things and, and we'll get it up there for everybody. Now, we want to thank Adobe Captivate uh, for sponsoring today's session. And if you're interested in the free trial, you can go ahead and go. Uh, in fact, I'll help you. You can go there right now and uh, sign up for the free trial. There, there are resources there as well. And uh, in addition, I want to thank Sherrods for doing a great job of uh, showing us. Uh, we ran a little short on time there, and yet you squeezed it all in with only about, I think you only went over by one minute. So that's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> it may it interest you to know that Pooja went over by seven minutes the other day. So, uh, so you're doing very well there. Um, and <laughs> we have, yeah, go ahead and uh, fill out the uh, underneath there in the bottom right hand corner. The help button has been replaced by what's the best or most useful 
thing that you learned today. So we'd love to know your answers to that. It'll help guide us in the future and also help other members who weren't here know what might be useful to them. So we'd love it if you could possibly fill that out. I know some of you have to jump uh, uh, because of the time. But yeah, thank you, uh, everybody, for filling that out. And any comments that you have, go ahead and, and put um, in the chat there. And I'll leave it up like this uh, so that you can do all those things. Uh, and again, I put the link up there for the certificate. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you could click uh, the uh, blue insights tab. Actually, um, you can scroll down there a little bit and you'll see how do I create my certificate of participation. If you click that, well, then it will uh, it will explain the whole program to you. Sheriff, uh, do you know what our next date is uh, together? Um, it's... Uh... Sometime I can tell you if you don't know. I, I, I'm looking it up right now, but uh, just thought if you happen to know off the top of your head, uh, we want to get everybody. Oh, it's uh, coming right up here, actually. Uh, it is on February. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> I'm looking at the wrong uh, month there. Um, it is on March 14th. Uh, so yes. we don't quite have the content yet. Do you know, Sheriff, what you'll be covering that day or is that yet to be discovered? It's uh, yet to be finalized. So, uh, you know, uh, Shubha and I will get back to you very soon. But one yeah. thing we know is that you're going to demo uh, that feature you were talking about with the AI, right? So uh, the AI functionality, to... yeah, will not be ready yet. So, but yes, I can provide a sneak review of uh, the AI functionality. Absolutely. Very good. Very good. Well, we'll let everybody know. You know I'm going to send you an email, folks. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll let everybody know as soon as we have that in hand. Um, but it'll be on March 14th at noon Pacific, so a little different time uh, than we normally do, and that's uh, 3 p.m. Eastern. So I hope you can join us for that one as well. That'll be Sheriff uh, as well. And if you're in Orlando and you come to the Expo or you uh, attend the whole entire conference, then do drop by uh, the Adobe booth and say hi to Sheriff. And if you can attend her session, it'll be well worthwhile, as you can tell uh, from uh, her webinars. And uh, and if you're there, well, then please drop by the Training Magazine booth and say hi to me as well. Sheriff, uh, anything else you want to uh, uh, impart to people before we stop? No, I mean, uh, this whole year we'll be focusing on solution based approaches so you know we started with this micro learning approach so that you know we can integrate you know the domain the concepts uh, some basic understanding of instructional design authoring the end to end so you know so please keep tuned for all our webinars this year because um, there's a lot we're going to cover across the various uh, areas of learning and development so much to cover, so many revisions, so many improvements, uh, and updates are on their way, uh, as uh, Sheriff mentioned earlier. Now, Linda is asking me, where can we find the recording? So anybody that doesn't know that, uh, all, especially all you new folks, uh, you can always go to the homepage of Training Mag Network, and over on the right-hand side are three buttons, and I think I have a slide for you, so I will grab that and, uh, and see if I can show you that over on the right-hand side. Sorry, there we go. Over on the right-hand side of trainmagnetwork.com, you will see the three buttons, calendar of all the webinars, the recorded webinar archive, and all the free white papers and eBooks and other resources there. So you can just click recorded webinar archive. And the way we do it, Linda, is we always post the newest recording right at the very top of the page. So you don't have to go lo looking or searching for it, but you'd be smart to do some searching. If you have a few minutes, do a little exploring. Uh, for example, if you typed in, uh, uh, Captivate, you would find that we have 124 different uh, sessions that we've recorded uh, over the years, uh, almost basically almost every month. I uh, skipped a little bit there uh, during the last couple of months because of the holidays, but we're back on track and making sure us work hard uh, every every month. So, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that's where you can find them. That's where you can always find the newest recording. The other thing you can do and a lot of people don't know this, is if you if you scroll down below the uh, today's webinars or the upcoming webinars, if you just scroll down a little lower on the page, you'll see the latest recordings posted right there. So you can click there too. 
Okay. Or you can go to this link where I put it over here on the side under Sheriff in the uh, webcam. You can go to that link and that's the link where the recording will be. As soon as Keith gets done posting it, which usually is a couple hours after the webinar ends. Okay. He's a busy guy today. I'm doing a number of webinars today. So uh, we're going to uh, keep him busy, but he should have this posted in two or three hours. Okay. Hope that answers that question. Anybody else? 